Okay, so now I will guide you through a few examples of how to use the flowchart. So to open a flowchart, just click here. And the flowchart is used to create sort of customized pipelines for doing various types of analysis and getting different types of uh, plots for your data very quickly. So to add notes to this flowchart, just right click, go to add node, and then you present it with a menu of many, many different types of nodes that you can use. And all of this is uh, quite well documented in the documentation site. So let's use this node and this node load project DF will allow us to load the data frame for the entire project. Let's click on that. And while you are using the flowchart, it can be useful to have the terminal that Mesmerize is currently running and open to, and that will show you progress for current analysis steps in your flowchart nodes. So when you click on a flowchart node, down here, this will give a brief description of what this does. So loads the raw project as a da data frames as a transmission. So transmission is basically just an object which is passed between nodes. And that is uh, sort of forms the basis of how analysis is done in the flowchart. And when you click on a node over here, the controls for that node will be highlighted. So when you have many nodes, it helps you to not get lost. And when you highlight over a terminal, it will, down here in the hover info, it will show you whether there's any output from that node. Okay, let's go here. So with the load project DF node, this over here will correspond to the tabs in your project browser. So if we open up our project browser, you can see we have one tab called root. And through doing uh, filtering, like for example, you might want to look at, you know, maybe perhaps certain um, animals of a certain age uh, or something, you can filter those out, create new tabs and load only that data here. And the process of how to filter throughout your, basically your project database is described in the documentation for the project browser. Okay, so let's just load this. Okay, and as you can see, you get progress bars here. So now it's loaded that entire project data frame as a transmission object here. Just to show you some simple visualization, let's look at perhaps like normalized and z-scored delta f over f of these curves. So let's create a normalized node. Let's create z-score node. Connect these up. And for most nodes, you will need to click apply for them to transmit the information downstream. So like, as you can see now, this node is connected, but it's not giving anything out. But it's only when we click apply that it will get processed. And the reason for that is certain nodes, perhaps like different single processing filters, may be quite uh, computational intensive. And the thing is that these controls are interactive. So every time you change something, it will update live. However, if you uncheck apply, you can, you can change things here and it will not continuously compute the basically this entire pipeline, which can be useful if you have like a large flowchart with perhaps many signal processing steps. You might want to set your nodes individually and then click apply. So let's just take a look at this for now. So let's just look at a heat map of this. Okay. Oh, and I want to look. So uh, for most of these nodes, you will need to choose a data column and that is the data column that is used as the input for this node. So let's actually take the input as the delta F over F and then that is z-scored and then it normalizes the z-score. Okay, let's take a look at it in heat map. 
And so now you can see these are the different data columns that are available for us to plot. So let's look at, let's just start with the z-score data. Okay, there. So um, with this heat map plot and with many other plots in Mesmerize, um, so you have like the main plotting area here along with the controls. Um, and what you're seeing on the right here is what's called the data point tracer. And so when you click on data points in a plot, it will show you the spatial localization of where that data point came from. So like the ROI and then a curve down here. And the curve that you are seeing down here corresponds directly to the option that you have chosen in the DPT curve column. So we can choose to look at different things here. So let's say if we chose normalization, let's click on something else. So what we're seeing down here, normalized curves, and that corresponds directly to what we have chosen here. And you can choose to see either a max projection or a standard deviation projection of this. And like for heat maps, you can also zoom in to specific portions of this and you can pan through this. So there's quite a bit of interactivity that's available in all of the various plots that Mesmerize offers. And when you click on a data point, you can look at all of the analysis steps that were performed uh, in order for it to achieve basically this plot here. So what you're seeing up here is the came in motion correction, CNMF, and came in D-trend DF over F, which was done in the viewer. And then down here, so spawn transmission, that is when a transmission was created in the flowchart through this node. And then after that, the data was z-scored and then normalized. And you can view all the parameters that were used for these steps over here as well, including this. But it can be much easier to just open an analysis graph to visualize basically the same data. And what you're seeing over here is basically all the other information that is related to the data point that we have clicked. And for example, let's say you want to take a look at spikes. This is more of how spikes are usually represented in papers. For instance. And finally, you can save an interactive form of the plot uh, for most plots uh, through clicking this. And if you save it in the plot directory of your project, it just makes it more easily accessible for when you open your project through the welcome window, as well as for sharing your entire mesmerized project. So let's see. Likes. Okay. Now let's say we can close this. We can even close this entire flowchart. And what you're seeing down here is all the plots that are inside of this project. And actually, to demonstrate this even better, I'm just going to close this Mesmerize project entirely. Let's open up Mesmerize again. open that project that we have created. Okay. And when you open a project, you will see all the flowcharts that are available here, if the user has saved them, and all of the plots that the user has saved in their plots directory. And we can double click this. And that interactive plot in that state is available. And you know it's interactive just like it was when it was in the flowchart. 
basically saves that state and that state can be reopened. Okay, in the next video, I will go through some more examples in the flowchart.